Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. It's a Saturday edition, uh, which means, imagine some of you guys are watching this on demand a little bit later. That's great. Get a little bit of rest today. It's, it's your, if it's your day off, take advantage of that. But even if it's our day off, doesn't mean we don't eventually start the day with God. You know, even if it's a little bit later, you get a little bit of physical rest and then start the day intentionally with God, no matter what the day is, because God always has something for us to learn, something to teach us, a way to grow us, and that's what we're about here, taking our next right step with Jesus. Now, we have been studying the book of Joshua for a couple weeks here now, and uh, we're going to continue doing that. And today's uh, getting into the conquest, and I know we've been talking about uh, Jericho, I, um, the town of I, <coughs> and uh, how God is, is helping them along the way. And today was kind of a big sweeping passage. It's two chapters here. We're going to kind of summarize um, as uh, the conquest continues. And, and bring out one of the big principles here, because I think sometimes we can get, look at this, all this fighting, all this death, all this destruction, just wonder like, what, 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 what's happening here? I, I don't understand this. God is a God of love. Is this a different God in the Old Testament than in the New Testament? What's, what's going on here? just want to let you know why things are going the way they are, as from a biblical perspective, as we understand God's character and what he's asking the Israelites to do. So uh, let me just uh, kind of start off here in chapter 11 of Joshua. <clears throat> it says, when King Jabin of Hazor reached, heard what had happened, meaning that Jericho had fallen, I had fallen, the five kings had gotten trapped in, or had been defeated as well, um, things are falling down. When he heard this happen, he sent messages to the following kings, the king of Joab, the king of Shimron, the king of Ashkva, all of the kings of the northern hill country, the kings of the Jordan Valley, south of Galilee, the kings of the Galilean foothills, uh, the kings of Nephoth Dor on the west, the kings of Canaan, both east and west, the kings of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jezubites in the hill country, and the Hivites in the towns and the slopes on Mount Huron and the, in the land of Mitzvah. Calls them all together, just bringing them all down. All these kings came out to fight. Their combined forces formed a vast horde. And all of their horses and chariots covered the entire landscape like sand on the seashore. The kings joined forces and established their camp around the water near Merom to fight against Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. By this time tomorrow, I will hand all of them over to Israel as dead men. Then you must cripple their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and all his fighting men traveled to the water near Merom. Merom and attacked suddenly, and the Lord gave them victory over their enemies. And the Israelites chased them as far as greater Sidon and eastward into the valley of Mizpah, until not one enemy warrior was left alive. Then Joshua crippled the horses and burned all the chariots as the Lord had instructed. It then goes on and just kind of continues how he had uh, taken each next step along the way, about how he had completely destroyed them and annihilated, emptied out the cities, just complete and other destruction. You just wonder, why did he have to go so far? And this really goes back to a couple things with God's original agreement with Abraham. He said, I'm gonna give you this land, the land, a nation, and a promise that the whole world will be blessed. And that covenant was confirmed uh, with his children, with Isaac, with Jacob. It was confirmed again with Moses. But with Moses, he also gave him the, the covenant, he says, if you follow these rules, then I will bless you. I will protect you. And these rules were rules of holiness to be set apart. In fact, rule number one was that you should have no other gods before me. Each and every one of these groups here uh, that it mentions in these two chapters have other gods before God. Uh, they worship local deities. They worship demonic forces. Uh, they are some of them, it talks about some of Anak's descendants. These are the giants from Genesis chapter 6, that kind of obscure passage where it talks about these weird spiritual forces and women having children and they're giants like this. Uh, we don't know exactly what that means, but it's an abomination to God and their descendants are there. So, so they need to be removed because not for punishment necessarily, but because God doesn't want them influencing his people. He knows our tendency that if there is temptation around us, that if there's cultures around us, they eventually bleed in. And really, we see the whole rest of the, the Old Testament fighting this battle of outside influences 
convincing the Israelites to worship other gods instead of the one true God. God knows this about the human condition. He knows our tendency to, to drift away. So his desire is that they will completely eliminate all outside force, completely eliminate all temptation to set themselves apart as holy. See, the question isn't how close can I get to sin and still you know, keep my integrity? How close can I keep these things around and, and just not cross the line and follow the, and, and break the law? No, God wants us to separate from sin as far as we possibly can, to, to get far away from temptation. In a very general sense, that's what this conquest of the land is about. It's about clearing space for them to worship God and God alone without anyone else trying to tempt them, influence them, get them to worship other gods. <clears throat> Although that's really not our issue these days. Uh, we're not really tempted <laughs> very often to worship idols or uh, to worship other gods. We are tempted to put other things ahead of God, whether that's relationships or money or, or temptation. And the principle that applies to us today is let's remove ourselves as far as we can from those influences. Let's create a space, a holy space, a set-apart space uh, where we can worship God and worship Him alone. This isn't a physical thing. These are our boundaries in our lives. These are uh, practices and things we do to keep ourselves set apart. Not to remove us from the world because we're called to reach the world we're in, but to be influencers in the world versus people who are influencing us. That's really at the core what this, what this battle is about. It really at its core is what this conquest of the land is about. It's about fulfilling God's promise, but also creating space to be a set apart people, which honestly is where we live today as well. Not a physical space. We're not supposed to remove ourselves from this world, but a spiritual space, a healthy emotional space where we can flee from temptation, not get as close as we can to the things that are gonna draw us from God, but to create some healthy boundaries in that. Let's pray. Uh, before we do, actually, a uh, special prayer request this morning. Uh, Paul Maharaj, longtime member at Palm Valley Church, is a uh, member of our medical team, member of our prayer ministry. Is uh, He needs a miracle uh, right now. He's been in the hospital with, with COVID uh, on a ventilator, and uh, I just wanna pray specifically for him. I, I ask for you to do that as well. Um, real, real, got some real critical news last night, so just want to, us to lift him up and his wife, Sandra, as well. Lord, we, we come to you today, and uh, first of all, we just bring up our, our brother and sisters, God, Paul and Sandra. God, we, we, we ask for a miracle this morning. God, we ask that you would bring healing. God, we ask that you would restore uh, his lungs, fight this virus, God, bring him back to wholeness. God, I just pray that you would be a Sandra as well. She's, she's is, is able to be by his side uh, a little bit last night, God. I just pray that you would comfort her in her um, isolation from, from other people just because of this, this virus, God. Um, I just pray that she would feel your presence, that she would know that we're praying for her and, and Paul and lifted them up, God, that she would not feel alone. God, we pray for this day. You know, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you that you have called us uh, as your people, as, as your children. God, not to be influenced by the world, but to influence it for you, to be your light shining into darkness. Help us to do that wherever we go today, whatever interactions we have. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Just good news, my dad is uh, back home from the hospital as well. Uh, he's been recovering well, and I uh, just want to give you guys that update. And uh, keep praying. Looking forward to tomorrow with our services, a good year in Buckeye online, and uh, look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. See you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.